Hi, this is Steve again from CodeNameOne.com. I'm here inside IntelliJ with my Codename One project that I just generated with Codename One Initializer. If you are curious how I got this far, you should check out my last video where I generated this project using the Codename One Initializer online tool at start.codename1.com. Okay, so I've got my Codename One project here where I have a simple app. It's got a form, a label, a button. When you click the button, it opens up a dialog. In this video, I'm going to turn this into a native iOS application. So I'm going to start by going up to the menu here, and I'm going to go to Local Builds. Come on, there we go. And I'm going to select Xcode iOS Project. So when I press Run now, it's going to generate an Xcode project for me, and it should open the project inside Xcode. Now I think this is going to go a little bit faster than normal because I've generated the project before, so it doesn't have to regenerate all aspects of it. No, actually, I must have made some changes. So it's uh, right now it's compiling all of the dot class files into C files and uh, putting together an Xcode project that I can open up inside, of course, Xcode. Now it's worth noting that uh, for the local build option here in Xcode, I need to be running on a Mac and I need to have Xcode installed. I also needed to have CocoaPods installed and another Ruby gem called Xcode Proj. All of the information for that is located at start.codename1.com uh, in the tutorial for the uh, Java Bare Bones project. Okay, so here we are inside my Xcode project, and I'm just going to use the, the built-in simulator rather than on a device. It's easier to show it on the screen, so I'm going to press build. And we'll let Xcode take it away. Okay, there's our app. Click the button, dialog pops up, and we're done. Okay, we're back in IntelliJ, and now we're going to look at a different option for building an iOS app. One that doesn't require you to have a Mac or Xcode installed. This is the build server option. All you need is a free Codename One account and then you can select iOS debug build if you want to be debugging on your devices or a release build if you're wanting to upload it to the App Store. Uh, there's only one hoop we need to jump through and that is uh, we need to satisfy Apple. You do need to have an Apple developer account and we need to have certificates in order to do our build. Luckily we've developed a nifty tool called the Certificate Wizard to help you with this task. We can't help you with the uh, Apple Developer account, you'll need to go through Apple for that, but uh, we can help you with generating the certificates. So we're going to go to Codename One Settings, and this is going to open up the Codename One Control Center. Now, this has gone through a lot of name changes uh, Control Center, Co Codename One Settings, and Codename One Preferences are all interchangeable. Oh, yeah, I got to press the uh, Run button once I. Select Codename One Settings. And this tool allows you to change all the aspects of your application, uh, such as build hints uh, to help customize the build for device, and all kinds of other things. You can explore here and see what options there are. In this case, we're going to go to Device Settings, iOS, Certificate Wizard. And here, I'm going to type in my Apple Developer ID. and press login. And this is going to take a minute. Okay, the first thing it gives me is a list of my devices. I'm going to just keep them all checked. I'll go to the next step.
Okay, the next screen is going to ask me if I want to regenerate my certificates because there are already certificates uh, there. And I'm going to choose yes. Okay, in this case, our application does not have push, so we are not going to enable it and we are not going to generate a push certificate. We'll click next. Okay, so here we are at the end of the certificate wizard. It tells me that the certificates and profiles have been installed on my local machine. I should be able to build the app for iOS and the codename one build server. Now before exiting this, it's a good idea to save my changes. This will save any changes it's made to my codename one settings file. And I'm going to quit this and save changes, yes, even though I just saved. Okay, and uh, the certificates were saved inside my common iOS search directory. So I've got an app store, development, uh, development uh, provisioning profile, and production provisioning profile. Uh, and these will be used for my builds going forward. So if all goes well, you shouldn't have to go through that certificate wizard again until either you start a new app or uh, your old certificates expire, uh, which usually, I can't remember how long they last, a year or two. Um, so let's proceed then. We'll go to the build server and we're going to do a debug build. And once that's selected, press the run button. and it's sending to the build server. So I'm going to follow the progress of my build. Okay, and our build is done. We can install it directly on the advice if we open up the uh, dashboard on a device. Click on this, it'll uh, give us a download link. We can also do it with a QR code. And there's, uh, we can download the IPA. Gives us icon and iTunes, uh, iTunes artwork that we can use for uploading to iTunes as well. So that was a fairly simple process. I highly recommend using the build server as it's uh, far more automated uh, than going through the Xcode step. Uh, but either way, you can build locally with Xcode or you can build using the codename one build server. There's going to be a, some more videos with uh, some of the other build targets. Uh, if you haven't tried already, I encourage you to go to start.codename1.com and create your own project and try to build it for iPhone. It's, uh, it's really easy and it can be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching and happy coding.